Hello everyone and welcome. Thank you all so much for joining us today for this live stream event. My name is Alexia and I am the event and project manager of the Microsoft Reactor Toronto. Um, before we begin, I'd like to quickly review two items with you, our code of conduct and our event guidelines. So first, please take a moment to review our code of conduct. Microsoft Reactor seeks to provide a respectful environment for both our audience and presenters. We encourage engagement in the chat, but please be mindful of your commentary, remain professional and on topic. Secondly, our event guideline, this session is recorded and will be available on demand through the Microsoft Reactor YouTube channel in about 24 to 48 hours. I will be sharing the link for our channel later in the chat. And also, if you've not been on a live stream through YouTube before, please note that you must create an account on YouTube to access and interact in the chat. You can set that, sorry, set that up now. And if you're unable to use the chat in the future, but have any questions, feel free to reach out to us through social media or on Meetup. So today's session, it is Pi Day. I'm going to bring in our speaker here. Hi, Bruno. How is it going? Hey, Alexia. Hello, everyone. Yes, it's Pi Day. We're super excited. We're having the first part of your session at, right now, and the second part will be following right after today at 3 p.m. Eastern time. It is in roughly an hour. So yeah, very exciting program for the day. I'll uh, let you take it away. Perfect. So can you show my desktop? There it is. So thank you very much, and hey, happy Pi Day. I didn't know that Pi Day exists until I get to Canada a couple of years ago, because you know, dates and formats. For me, it usually goes year, month, and day. And then here in North America, they use day, month, so we have here 314, so Pi Day. So hello, everyone. My name is Bruno, Bruno Capuano. I'm a cloud advocate in the Toronto Reactor in Microsoft. Today, I'm in my office, which is blue. I have a lot of devices here in my back which I'm going to probably show later with a lot of Raspberry Pi stuff. I am wearing my Raspberry Pi black t-shirt and is the perfect excuse to talk about a little Raspberry Pi in the Pi Day and Azure IoT, which is kind of the stuff that I like to do. So <clears throat> I am going to show basically from scratch how you can create an image for a Raspberry Pi, how you can configure and create a device in Azure IoT and how you can set up the device to be used there. And again, because we are using Raspberry Pi, I am going to also connect some sensors, have some fun, do some stuff there, so you can see how this is working and how we can do all together. And now that we talk about this, this is basically the topic for today. We are going to see the tool. I'm not going to do everything, all of the steps, because it's going to take a lot of time. So I have a couple of videos recorded. And I have everything here, but my main, main topic is about today, Raspberry Pi and Azure IoT. And then custom model, because it's super, super, in a super way to that we can do this. And as usual, so sorry about the demos, the jokes, and everything else. Uh, you know me. It's kind of having fun. So that's it. So that's my slides. I don't have any more slides. I'm planning to do all the work here in my desktop. This is my Windows 11 for demos and Everything else is a beta version, so it's an insider version. So sorry about that. And I have here a very small demo that I will probably do at the end with the Raspberry Pi Pico. Pico. I have the zero there. And for the first demo that I'm going to use today, I'm going to use an old Raspberry Pi 3. Let me switch my camera here. I want to put the camera. So I'm going to use this Raspberry Pi 3. And there in the back, I have set up a couple of Raspberry Pi 4. I have a build, a Docker build for my, my images with the 4, and even a red terminal with this. So this is the stuff I'm going to use today. And 
How do we start? How we can? Yes, super question that I see on the line. Uh, Kojo, sorry if I say your name, but is asking if he can watch the video offline. Yes, in 24 to in one or two days, it's going to be online on the Toronto React on the on the Reactor YouTube channel. So yes, feel free to come back and watch the video, and it's also be available in LinkedIn and the other platform. You can watch this. So how do we start? What do we want to do? So at the beginning, if you never use a Raspberry Pi. There is a super cool tool from the Raspberry Pi uh, family. You can go to raspberrypi.org and launch the Imager. The Imager is a tool that basically will help us to create images for the Raspberry Pi. And what I like about this is that usually before having this tool, we need to go download the image that we want to save because the Raspberry Pi use an SD card with an operating system and then use Balena Editor or other tools or manually uh, Flash or write this image to the to the to the card. Right now, what we can do is we can choose we can choose sorry which is the operating system that we want to use. You can see here that by default we have Raspberry Pi, the latest version, and it's going to automatically connect to the servers and download the latest version. We have other options like here we have the little version, the light version, which doesn't include any UI. This is the one that I use for Azure IoT. They have a full version that includes desktop. If we want to use our Raspberry Pi connected to a monitor with a keyboard, and we want to use also uh, the full, full, <clears throat> the full setup with a lot of tools. With uh, I can't remember what are the tools that are there, but you have code editor, you have office application, you have a lot of stuff. This is the one that you can use, and you have also here some previous version. If you don't want to play around with Raspberry Pi, you want to try some new some other OS here, you can go in example and choose Ubuntu, super popular Linux distribution here. And you have here a couple of distributions from Ubuntu that you can use there. I write in my blog, in bruno.com, I write a little about how you can use Ubuntu, Ubuntu server. In the previous version, probably need to test if everything is working right now uh, to use the device, the Raspberry Pi as a IoT device. It should work, but if someone is not using the Raspberry Pi OS and is using Ubuntu and have some issues, please let me know. Please contact me in Twitter or leave a comment here. I love to see people saying hi at the beginning. Sorry about this. Let me say hi to Ravi, John, Tyndall, Bruce, uh, and the other ones. I hope I don't, I'm not missing anyone. But hey, if someone else has a question, say hi in the chat. That's for me. Main question, a usual question that I use that I have sometimes is Ubuntu. How well it works Ubuntu? So I mostly, mostly, and probably every time I want to do something, I use the Raspberry Pi OS and I only install Ubuntu uh, to double check uh, if I am going to have another device with Ubuntu. I'm basically sure that I have there, uh, that is working also there, but it works great. And you also have other images here like uh, the Manjaro or let me go here. To, if you want to play games in the Raspberry Pi, you have here the chance to automatically write and flash in an SD card, very small SD card. You can write here your RetroPie, then you get some games and you can use your Raspberry Pi to play. So there are plenty of options here. What I like about this tool is that once you have this, let me see, let me turn off this. You choose your operating system. Let's go for, as I mentioned, usually I go for Raspberry Pi OS Little. I don't need any, <clears throat> any OS. Next step is Ravi asked for the URL for my blog. Yes, yeah, sure, no problem. It's as you can expect, not very smart. Is oh, sorry. Bruno.com. And I can show you later a couple of articles that I write about this. So Tindal is asking about a customer is running Ubuntu snaps as an IoT device. Yes, that's what I basically was doing, and I am going to get there. I am testing everything in my Raspberry Pi, which is with Ubuntu, with the client, which is a very cheap device compared to the... And then I know that if my containers and everything is going to work in my Raspberry Pi, it's going to work also in Ubuntu. I will show you later there. So going back here, saving an image, choose the system, choose the storage here, I have here a big disk, I have here an SD card, and a super cool feature that we have right now that is available in this version is 
this button here will allow us to, hey, we can define a name for our device. So we can put a Raspberry Pi reactor. I will, you can enable from here SSH. You can define a password. You can define an authentication name. You can define if you want to automatically con connect to a Wi-Fi or the local settings. There are plenty of stuff that you can do here. And this will be automatically saved there. So I already have one uh, up and running. I already have one doing this. And this is going to be our main, one of the main places that we are going to spend some time is going to be in the console. So my device name is RP Raspberry Pi Reactor. I am doing a ping and I am tuning on the device. As I said, I already have the device connected. It's already, oops, sorry. Is already here with all of the stuff. And uh, hey, it's going to be logging to the network in a couple of seconds. So let's wait until it's connected. By the way, I am using, <coughs> I am connecting the device with a wireless cable. I'm sorry, with a with a network cable um, to avoid wireless whatever. But you can automatically connect it. So it's connected. It's online. So I have already my ping my ping live here. Next step will be let's connect. When you use your <coughs> Bay Major, you can define which is going to be your user and password. If you don't define your name, it's going to be automatically assigned the user Pi, and then the password is going to be Raspberry. I created one here, so I have I am going to execute this command. Sorry about that. SSH, let's connect via console, via terminal, using the user Pi. And this is the device name. You can use the device name or you can use your IP, depending on what you want. Once I have this, it's going to ask for the password. So here I am in my device. This is a brand new Raspberry Pi. What I usually do here, and again, my idea here is to show you what are the, usually do this in 10, 15 minutes, what are the steps that you can follow to register this in an Azure IoT. But what I usually do here is I Raspberry I run this, this command, Raspi config, to access the configuration of the device, and I enable a couple of things. So here, the first stuff that I am going to use, because I have, a, I think this is a 32 gigabyte or bigger, 64 gigabyte uh, SD card, I am going to expand my file system, going here, expand file system. This is going to expand the, 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 the file system to to have the complete access, and then I need to boot here. So the <coughs> I'm going to escape. the configuration is going to ask me to reboot. I'm going to say yes, and there it is. I am back to not having my Raspberry Pi online, so I'm going to ping the Raspberry Pi, and when it gets back, probably take a couple of seconds, I am going to connect again. The next step is also very simple, and uh, depending if you need it or not, I usually enable the access to the GPI, to the to the pins, because I am want I want to use later the pins and a sensor and do some wiring and stuff. So my next step will be that, and then I am going to update the Raspberry Pi, which is also super important. So the ping says that the Raspberry Pi is back online. Let's stop this. Let's connect again. SSHP at your device name, password, and we are online here and let's go again to the to the configuration and let's start to enable some interfaces so here you can enable if you are planning to use a camera a legacy camera the one that you can connect in the in the long port no usb you can enable here the camera ssh is enabled i am connecting and using this right now vnc if we want to use and connect to the device and have access to the, to the desktop we need to enable vnc i didn't have desktop installed here so if I enable BNC, it will take probably 10 minutes, install it, all of the genome I think it's using right now in the latest one, uh, artifact that you need to have a desktop, but I want to access the remote GPO, which are the pings, and also interface SPI. So with these two, I will have this enabled, and I am going to update my device. This will take probably 10, 14, I'm sorry, we're probably going to two to four minutes, depending on the network and depending on the day. It's going to run, check the... Codio ask which editor are you using in Windows to ping Raspberry Pi? I am not using an editor. 
I am using Windows Terminal. I am using this tool. This is a tool that you can install from directly from <coughs> the, the store, but you can go and install it from the GitHub. And then it's basically a, a terminal. You have here, this is a PowerShell terminal. I have here several of these, but it's not a specific terminal. It's not a specific SSH client. I am using native SSH in Windows. And then in my terminal, I have the chance to create new consoles using PowerShell, Common Prop, Azure Shell, PowerShell. I have a couple of here to do some Python stuff with OpenCV and machine learning. I have a preview here, but not. I am not using Putty. I'm not using any device here, any other device. I am using just uh, the standard window, the standard Windows terminal. So update is done. Update is is complete. Now we are here. I can, and just to show you the difference here, I am running, I am connected to my device here. If I run CLS, I am in Linux, it's going to command not found. I need to run the clear. There's the screen. Outside, I am in Windows where CLS work. If I make some mistakes here, sorry about that. That's me switching between Linux and, Win Linux and Windows. And sometimes I get confused here. But this is the file system. Uh, I don't have anything here. This is what we have. So it's completely, completely empty. It's a brand new created uh, device. So let's follow the step. <coughs> Bilal, uh, Bilal asks how my device is connected to the internet. So let me see if I can show the camera again here. So my device is connected here and I have here in the back is connected with the, with the network cable. But when you create your image, you can define if you are creating your image for the Raspberry Pi, you can go here, creating your image. And let me switch back to the configuration. When you let me choose my OS, little choose my storage G and choose my settings. When you choose your setting here, there are a couple of important ones. First one, your name. This is how you're going to be define your name. This is how you're going to find your name to. Uh, it's going to define your name. They are an enable SSH. So I can, if I am in the same network, I can access this. And here in the bottom, you can have here how you can use your Wi-Fi. So if I enable this, uh, it will, once it boots, it gets power, it's going to be connected to a wireless network. I am not using wireless. I am connected with the cable because it's easier and I like to jump. I have everything here and I like to jump a lot with this. So yes, Bilal, this is how I connect the, the, the Raspberry Pi. So going back here, we are in the step one of what we want to do that we have our device ready. We have a device which has updated uh, OS. So we need, we need right now to create a device. <clears throat> yes, I know the flat cables. I'm sorry, Tindal, you are right. The flat, <laughs> the flat cat cables are very, very, very bad. This is, I, I'm so sorry. This is a flat cable, which I have here. This is the, the closest one that I have, but I know that they are not the best of the, <laughs> the, the, the best of the quality. You are completely right. Uh, as I said uh, at the beginning, sorry for the bad jokes and the bad demos, and you are correctly, you are 100% here correct. Go for the CAT6 or the good ones. I can't remember which is the right. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not an expert there, but you have some different levels there. Uh, the good ones are usually not flat. So thanks, Tindal, for making that, uh, that uh, acclamation. So going back, the device is ready. Let's connect to, let's set up the device as a natural IoT device. So what I am going to do here, I am going to go to my, there it is, sorry, the other screen, let me see, there's a big one here. I am going to connect to my, <coughs> to my dashboard. This is my, let me double check one step here. This is the dashboard that I have in Azure. Uh, not planning to do a full session, a full overview of what you can do in Azure. But the idea is that at any moment here in Azure, we can create a resource. And one of the resources that we can create is an Azure IoT Hub. The Azure IoT Hub, if you go to create resource and you search using Azure IoT Hub, you will have this one, which is the one that you can create on search. 
you can create to, to use here. So with this online, if I want to create the resource, when I am creating the resource, you can choose what <coughs> subscription you want to use, what resource you want to use. Let me go for Azure IoT. You can name your more reactor, you can name your instance, and then at a specific moment, you are going to define which uh, for another one. Specific time, you're going to define which, what do you want to do? What is the, this is the important part when you are creating a resource, what do you want to use? And S1, which is usually good enough to do testing, you have 800, uh, I think, no, 400,000 mesas per, per month, and it costs, it costs around $20 per month. You have the free tire, which is free, 8,000 8, mesas per day, but you don't have some features. So it's up to you to, to, figure, to, to define what do you want to, what do you want to have here. I have already created one. It's called IoT Reactor. And what I am going to do here, this is my IoT Hub. The idea in the IoT Hub is this is the place that I'm going to use to manage my devices. And what I am going to, what I am going to define here is, so Kodjo is asking about how we can use a Raspberry Pi Pico in this context. The Pico is a completely different scenario because it's not support the Raspberry Pi OS, it's a real-time operating system. I'm going to talk a little about the Pico at the, at the end, but there are some good news there. But let me wait until the end because it will break completely the flow of what I am telling here. So the idea here in the Raspberry, in the IoT Hub, is that from here I have access to a lot of property of the Hub, and one of the important ones is how I manage my device. So there are plenty of ways to do this. By the way, there is a full. Let me go here in my resources. There is a full tutorial that you can follow. This is the tutorial, which explains step by step how you can install Raspberry Pi uh, OS, how you can create this using the portal that I'm using right now, code or even the command line, uh, how you can create a device, which are the steps that you are doing. So this is kind of, the, I am going to share this later, but this is kind of the idea of what you have. So here I can see, let me do some zoom here. So here I can see my devices. Let's create a new device. Let's name this device. Actor, I am going to connect using a symmetric key. I don't have my certificates here. So when I do this, five seconds later, I will have the device available here. So I have my device connected here, RP reactor in my list of devices. And I can start to use this device. And how can I use this device? So I will have a key and a connection string that I can use in the final device in the Raspberry Pi to connect this. So what do we need to do next? I need to go back to my device and I need to start to install stuff here. So I can, oh, let me do a quick configuration here because I apply, perfect. So I am going to come here and start to install stuff on the, on the device. And again, as I said, this is basically it works like, like a charm, not all the time. You need to do some, some stuff. But what I am going to do, I am going to follow the step here that I have in install IoT Edge in the Raspberry Pi. Let's clear this. Let's remove some zoom here. And I am going to switch between you have Ubuntu here or Raspberry Pi. I'm going to go to Raspberry Pi, copy this, take it here, and run it. So it basically. Download the list of uh, software and archive and add it into the source so I can upload and access this software. Once I have this uploaded, I need to install a container. The idea of the Azure IoT client, the Edge client, is that it's basically managed using container, docking containers. So we need a docking container. The docking container that we use here is Mobi Engine. So if I go back here and do something to my device, remember, the console is my device. And I do sudo docker version, no docker installed. If I install, run the updates, and then install Mobi Engine, I will have here 10 seconds later, 40, 30, depending on the day, 
I will have my, my enzyme working. So a couple of seconds waiting. Yes, do you want to continue? Yes. Install the mobile enzyme. The, the moment that you don't want to have any weird error or whatever when we are installing this, and it should work fairly, fairly fast. There it is, unpacking, now it started to work. And remember, I am using, I am doing all of this in a Raspberry Pi 3. So you have the feeling and you can, we can, I can show you later. I will run the same container in a three and a four and we can test how fast they are working and how the performance in both is going to be mind blowing. The Raspberry Pi 4 is, it's amazing. So uh, Tyndall say that my SD card is my bottleneck. Yes, the SD card, they are good SD card, but they are so I mean, I, I'm using those uh, the, these cards a lot. So I am also having my plan B or C here with another ones, but they are probably going to be dead in any moment. If you plan to use this in production, for example, I will avoid installing everything in the SD card and I will use uh, an SD an H, a solid state disk uh, connected via USB, probably. <coughs> Uh, post a link to this, yes. Let me try to... Will I ask how I have a slide? Um, if I have a slide, how architectures, how it works with the container running on the Pi? Uh, it's somewhere here. Uh, it's somewhere in the, in the documentation. Uh, as soon as we finish with this one, let me see if I can find it. The main link, if you can, the main link is, I'm sorry, the main idea is that uh, it's all described here. And I'm so sorry I didn't share this. So if I can find my, if I find my, the, the YouTube and I, I'm going to share this. So it seems that Docker is done, which is kind of nice. Wait a couple of seconds. And in the meantime, I am going to try to access this and share the links in YouTube. Fred asks, I can see this is a timely process. Is it possible to configure multiple, uh, multiple pies at the same time? Yes. I am doing this with one, and I am doing this kind of a home edition. You can go back to here to the reactor i'm sorry to the iot hub and instead of create a single process to deploy one device you can create a kind of batch deployments and you can bulk deployment in different layers so there are different there are tons of ways to do this i don't have this prepared if if, if someone is really interested i can sh i can create a 30 minute demo with at least three raspberry pi when you are going to deploy all of them kind of in bulk mode. But that's a very good question because, yes, it's a timely process. If you want to do one, that's kind of thing. Going back here, let me go back here. We have more, <clears throat> we have Docker installed. So if I run my Docker version again, you can see here that I have Docker installed. It's kind of my client version 3.0, server version 3.0. It's a specific version prepared to, to work with Azure IoT. So the next step is install the runtime. Let's install the IoT Edge. Again, the, the instruction is update the applications and install the IoT Edge. Let's copy this. Let's run this. It's going to take some time. And I will try to, to connect and to show you the, the link to this, this document. So let me copy this and let's go to the comments here. Okay. I need to accept this. 
So I just share the, the document with the step-by-step -step process that you need to do. And again, remember, this is a Raspberry Pi 3. It's kind of an old one. Uh, someone else mentioned I am using a very crappy SD card. Invest if you have money in good SD cards. But hey, this is just for fun to see how we can do it. And the idea is that once you deploy Azure, deploy Azure IoT, you are not going to manage your device anymore from here. You're going to do everything from the cloud, from the Azure IoT, from the Azure IoT Hub uh, environment. So right now, it's taking some time. There it is. And my idea, my request right now is that, hey, I need to make the configuration to my device. How do I do this? I need to run these commands. So, sudo IoT Edge config MP connection string with the connection string. So my device will be resistor in the <clears throat> will be resistor uh, and it's going to be automatically resistor and subscribed to my Azure IoT Hub. So let me open here Notepad. And what I am going to do, I am going to go to the Azure IoT Hub that I have here, open my device. Copy the connection string. I have it here and paste it here. Copy, paste, there it is. And now I have to apply my configuration. And there it is. I have everything kind of up and running. And what this apply did, it stopped the services that are using this configuration and start the services with this configuration. So at this moment, I can do a couple of things. So following the tutorial, blah, 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 do the apply, very steep. I can check the status. So let's check the status. So let me check the status here on the top. So you can take a look. Services are running, it's kind of fine. I can do a check, and this is interesting, and I am so going to show you why. The check, the sudo IoT check, is going to check the connections, the connection strings, the configuration. If I have connectivity uh, issues between the device and the cloud, for example, I can configure the device to use HTTPS or AMQP or other protocols. It's going to perform a complete, a complete check of everything here. And it's also going to check if I have the latest version of the definition from the Azure IoT device. So after a second, and this takes some time, it's find the problem it will show me that I have a problem here. And I usually have one or two because by default, when you create a device, remove a little of the, when you create a device, the device by default has these two modules. Is Azure IoT device work with modules? This is the one that uh, edge module that we can define. And you have two, the agent and the half, which is basically talk to each other to manage that everything is fine. By default, this, I am running the latest version. Oh, sorry about here. Sorry about this. And these, these, the, these devices, these runtimes are, I don't know why, in my version, are creating this with the agent 1.1 and with the hub also 1.1. I need to update these to two. So let's go back here to the reactor. See that I have some problem with the edge agent. And I will have a, pro a problem also with the edge hub. So a couple of things to fix there. Let's wait until they finish the connectivity checks. And I will fix this as soon as possible. In the meantime, I see more, more questions there. Tyndall, are you asking if we can run this in compute module 3? That's your question. Uh, let me know. I will check the comments. So, so OK, so he, we are here in the, the this is done. What I can do here, I can take a look. Yes, compute module three. So yes, and right now, in example, I have the red terminal, which is a very nice device to use compute module four. But you can run this and do the same with compute module three. So right now, you can see here that I only have one agent running. It's agent. I should have two. So what I am usually doing here, I have Write this by hand, one, two, one, two, apply, create, create. And I will see here that one is running, the other is not there yet. So it's all about waiting some time. 
until we have this. And what I usually do here, if I go to sudo docker container and take a look at the list of containers, remember that I told you everything is a container here, so the agent here is a container. So it's running here. And it's going to take some time. It's unloaded the second one. It's trying to it's trying to install. So I am going to get this at any moment. But this is the moment that I can start to add stuff to my Raspberry Pi. I can go here. I can get back here. And an example, if you want to run a SQL Server in your device, I don't know, or another module. The idea is that once your device is configured and you have everything, you can start to add functionality. Uh, CM3 for October. Uh, ta -ta -ta. <laughs> I see a lot of comments. <laughs> Thanks for the funny comments there. And uh, yes, and there is a shortage of devices right now that are very expensive, and you can hardly get these devices. But I can let let go back here and let me show you how. If I am going to configure my device, I can add new modules, and I can add modules here from an IoT Edge module that you can create. There is a marketplace or stream analytics. Let's focus on the marketplace for a moment. So if I have one module for the marketplace, I am going to see tons, tons of modules that there are already created that I can deploy, an example, in my device, and they are going to give me some features, like an example. These two are amazing. So if I want to connect a camera to my Raspberry Pi and do some real live video analysis in the device, and this is a very small device, so you are probably going to make it, it's not going to be very fast, but it's going to work. I can install the Azure Video Analyzer and it's going to be running on my device. It's going to download the module with the capabilities doing this. If I want to store my devices doing some, I don't know, some crazy login or whatever, and I want to store these logs in the device, I can start this one, which is also amazing, the Azure Blob Storage. And it's going to create a global storage in the device. And I can also define some policies that will help me to synchronize information in real time with a real Azure storage. So we can have a device storage, a cloud storage, and every five minutes, for example, I want to synchronize the information. I want to find something new, remove from the original from the device, and get it in the cloud. And it's the same APIs and capabilities that you are using on the cloud. The same with anomalies. This is another community services. If you want to use your devices connected and getting information, an example from the power consumption information, you can get these logs and start to use and start to send this information to an anomaly detector that is going to run on the device and detect anomalies. And when you detect anomalies, trigger message, trigger whatever, do a lot of stuff. So Bruce asked, what database do I recommend? I know that we have SQL here. I only use SQL because I know that we have SQL in example. We have SQL Server module, uh, which is <clears throat> this one. Not, not the, do not do, I did this the first time. Do not install this one. This is not a database. This is a simulator that is going to trigger information and simulate a temperature sensor. This one in the bottom is the one that you need to, you need to install. So, I only use this. I know there are more. I don't know if we have Hadoop or have Hadoop. I don't find any Hadoop or MySQL should also appear with SQL. So no, I know there are more. I probably need to, to share for more, but it's also very simple to install. You also have Node-RED here if you want to install, which is super popular in the automation world. Uh, yes, John, I will show you this right now. I have one for running several containers. So this is the idea that you can run these containers, you can install this. Let's install an example the storage. Azure Blob Storage, I select that one. Then I have here the module. I can define the name. I have the name. This is the location. I have also the chance to define some variables here. I can define the name and a key. I can define some creation options for the container. This is going to open, because this is Docker, it's going to open a port, a TCP port in the 11,002. Uh, and we don't have twin settings here. But once I configure this and I create a couple of seconds later, I will see here my three modules here in my Raspberry Pi 3. 
And these three are going to be deployed and running here in the Raspberry Pi. So last time that we ran the list of modules that they were running here, we only have the agent. Let's do this one more time. And you will see that I should have the two of them, unless I need to boot or something, reboot or something. There it is. I have the agent and the hub. Both of these are, are running. They are both the latest version. Should be one, two, latest version here. And it's probably downloaded in the SQL Server. But let's do something interesting. Let's do something that you can use in the real time. So Raspberry Pi, we use the Raspberry Pi a lot to with sensors, with the staff. The idea here is that uh, let me share this El Bruno Azure. Uh, proof. So I write uh, a lot. I write a lot. I write a series of of blogs where I basically explain how to do something like this. Wiring is fine, but I like to use this. Let me switch my views one more time. I like to use this board. This is a shield that you put on top of your Raspberry Pi, and you have here some connectors. And you have a lot of sensors. You have plenty of sensors that you can use. And the, the good thing about this is that you avoid wiring. It's kind of plug and play. And you have an SDK in Python. You also have access to a lot of libraries in C++. So you can do a lot of stuff. And I write, and I'm going to share this in the, in the video right now, I create a, a series of blogs where I explain about, hey, how you can create an Azure IoT module that you can write here and it's going to connect to the to the cloud and it's going to get the temperature and humidity and trigger this information to the cloud as a module. So I have this up and running. So what I am going to do, I am going to shoot down my Raspberry Pi. Let's see if we have, hey, there is my module. Right now it's somewhere else. If we have modules running here, we have three already here. Uh, let me do some shadow shut down. So it's going to shut down the device. And as soon as it's shut down, I'm going to plug this in. So we have this. And in the meantime, while it's turning down, I created this module. Uh, and again, and I explain all of this here. Let me paste this in the window. Uh, I also published this model somewhere here in, I have an, Repository, I have here a Azure container here where I have the repository so I can get back here and in the configuration that my of my device, I can set set modules and need to do some user and password here. And I am going to add a custom module here. Let's do humidity. Proof temperature is going to be the name. This is going to be, oh, let me copy my location. And I think I have here reports values as true. I can't remember. I write about this, but I can't remember. And uh, in the container create options, I need to define. I need to define a couple of values here in order to make it work. Uh, this one, this is my module, and this is my container create, container create option, so I can access the devices. This is accessing the IT2, I2, I, I2C, sorry, I say it in Spanish, so I can access the pins, and I don't have module settings here. And this is the full configuration. So once I have this, the only thing that I need to do here, I need to add my user and password. So let me copy this from, have it somewhere here. Okay. User. And so what this is going to do right now, this is going to download a new module. You see here that I will have a new module anytime soon. 
the module, there it is. Anytime soon. Right now the device is offline, offline, so I don't have the device running. So let me turn on the device again. And as soon as the device, I am out here. As soon as the device get back online, you will see how this is working. And we have five more minutes. And uh, I am taking. Bruce asks if we have SQL Server with synchronization. Yes. It's you can enable synchronization with the cloud, with SQL in the cloud, which is super amazing because you have both database sync all the time. And you can, I can't remember, I, I can't remember, I haven't used this in a while, but you can even have some stages. So you have several devices with a local SQL server and all of them synchronized to a main one and you avoid some duplication. So the device is up and running. Uh, let's connect to the device. And once it's connected, uh, let me do some SADO IoT at least. We will see that we have the we have all of the services here is still downloading definition. So I am going to show it's going to take some time to do this. In the meantime, I show you, I told you that I have another device here, a four here. I think this is the four, the ten. So this device is offline. Let me turn on the device. And this device, in this device, I am using I need the network. Let me let me change it for a second. So in that, in that device, what I have done in, the, in this one, I have, I am using this, oh, this and save. I have this sense hat, which is a super cool, a super cool hat that you can put on top of your Raspberry Pi. And then you can connect and you have a, a couple of sensors in the sense hats. You can, you have a LED file there. So there are plenty of stuff that you have there. And what I like about this is that it's super easy to connect. You have plenty of stuff. It's easy to, to program. It's, this is how you attach the sense hat. You have both of these here, one on top of the other. And that's it. Connect. And super easy. I have it connected there. And I created the module, and that's a Raspberry Pi 4. I created the module that I can use here to I can use here to, to control the Raspberry Pi hat, the, the sense hat. So if let's take a look when the device is back online, it should be back online soon. There it is, is the five, sorry about that. There it is. And this is my sense hat module. Sorry. So you can see here, I have my sense hat module running, up and running. And there are a couple of things that I can do right now. So I can open a tool, and we only have 10 more minutes, so I am going to finish to, to tackle the question right now. I can open a tool like the Azure IoT Explorer, which is a beta tool, is in preview, that allows us to connect to an IoT hub, see the devices, and I start to interact. An example here, this is the one that has the device. And I have here, I can see the same information that I see in the Azure Hub, and I can access the sense hat. And hey, because it's running and the sense hat is reporting information, at any moment I can start to get the telemetry and I will start to see if it's reporting the temperature and the, and the humidity. I can also come here and let me set up this so you can, you can take a look. I can also come here and send information to the sense hat so it display in the, in the hat. Let me start this up. This is my phone camera, a remote camera that I created with Python. So what I am going to do, I am going to set up this. So we take a look at the sense hat. 
they are. You can see here in the telemetry that it's starting to get information. This is information that I see in real time. And if I go here and go for my module twin, I can start to say hi to Ravi, Fred, say something about the survey. So X, I will send this message to the same hat and I will display this message in red. So when I save this, oh my God, uh, I need to solve the orientation, orientation and somehow red is not working. Let me do this in lowercase red. There it is. Sorry about that. That's my lowercase. I don't know if you can see this. It's super small, I know. But hey, I am sending information in real time to the sense hat. And this device, the, the, the four, it's running three modules right now in real time. And each one of these modules is a Docker container. So I can't remember who was, I, who was asking about is the Raspberry 3 or 4 are good enough to run several containers? Yes, I am running three here. The Raspberry Pi reactor, it's running uh, modular identities. It's running four. Uh, somehow I miss, uh, miss some configuration in the group 10. It's disconnected. But hey, you can run several of these, and it's still good enough to, to make some stuff. I, if we do some IPT, get. I always like NeoFed to, to show the information. So you can see that this one is really a Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, this is what I have right now. Sometimes take a look at the, at the comments here. Sorry, we are going to see the, 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 the we're going to see the fix the survey. Yes. Uh, temperature, yes, the, the the other device, the five is sending temperature in real time with the sense hat. I go to telemetry and I start this. There it is. Right now my office is at 33 degrees. Which is super hot, and that's me also having some fever here, low humidity, and I make some mistake probably here when I try to. No, this is probably the temperature. I don't know what I am doing here, but I need to double check uh, a couple of things here. But this is the real time information that I get from the from the device. Uh, that's a Raspberry Pi four. Sorry, that's not this one. This is a Raspberry Pi four. I also have the chance to send message here because I am also implemented. I am going to share the details here, the module team. So fix survey, I'm going to say hello, and let's do this in blue. So the device is reading the cloud, reading the information, reading the message, actual, uh, updating the, the two message. And when it has some updates, it's going to show this. And this is a tree. This is the other one, the one that we started from the beginning with the Raspberry Pi 3. And hey, it's a, it's an old one. It's a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. It's also, it only have one gigabyte of memory, very slow one, but it's currently it's running three containers, probably four if I didn't make any mistake. It's running three. Proof failed. And there are plenty of stuff we can do here. You can access log. I can do some SADO, IoT, edge logs, uh, proof temp, and see, uh, sudo, sorry, see what it's happening. So I'm basing, basically, I need to, oh, I need to define an extra property here. So you can access the log. You can see everything that is happening here. Internally, it's using containers. Container. So we are going to see all of the containers running here. But again, we are probably going to forget to go here. And everything that we want to do with the device is going to be managed from here, from the console. So five more minutes to go. I need to switch to the next one. If you have any more questions, if you, have, if you want to do something else, uh, and again, I promise that this is what we did today. Create an image, create a device on the cloud, 
make the configurations, make the update, install everything, make it work, install a custom module, install a storage, install something else, kind of everything is working. And we are going to start a new session where I'm going to show you in a different device, also Raspberry Pi based, how we can do this. If you have any more question, any other question, Twitter is probably the best place to contact me, at El Bruno or my blog. I share the, I share the, the links. Uh, everything else is going to be shared later in the, in the next session. So thank you very much. I will probably take two minutes to get more something to drink, and I see you in the next one.